Hey man, say man, it's your boy Big Dreams. Welcome back to the channel. Before we carry on any further with this video, make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment, most importantly, make sure y'all subscribe and hit that post notification bell. Stay to all. We is back with another banging video, back with another reaction video, man. And today we are reacting to a video title, 10 Celebs Who Tried to Warn Us About Diddy. We finna dig in here and see what's going on. I'm not gonna make the opening of this video too long. All I ask is that y'all smash that like button so this video going higher in the algorithm. Go crazy in the comments. Let me know what you want me to react to. And if you're watching me and you're not subscribed, man, subscribe. That's all I ask. You finna go ahead and dig into this video, though, man. There are so many witnesses. There are so many victims. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at celebrities who spoke out against Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy, before his 2024 arrest and indictment. We're just starting to scratch the surface of what this case, uh, who it's, this case is going to touch and involve. Kanye West. In retrospect, we should have read between the lines whenever somebody described a puffy party. In a 2014 episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Chloe recalled attending a Diddy party where everyone was, quote, butt naked. So I thought that he met Chloe's new crew of friends. And all I said was, yes. So and then I stopped. All I said was, yes. Chloe's former brother-in-law, Kanye West, also made comments concerning Diddy that read differently now. In 2022, West called Sean Combs a, quote, fed, claiming he had sold people out to spare himself from jail time. That's why you gotta come at me, because part of the deal for you to be a doing that, da, 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 and get out of jail is that you promise that you're gonna go pull my coat up. Since West is infamous for making wild, often unfounded accusations, these statements initially blended in with his other tirades. Even now, it's hard to say if West's allegations were authentic. Given Combs' current legal issues, though, West's words feel like a warning, whether or not he truly had any inside information. I don't know if it's a party. I'm saying that metaphorically, you know what I'm saying? But, but you've heard about the parties that everyone is talking about. But you've never got invited to them, so you I don't know what really... part, I don't know, I don't even know what the part, that's how far out of it I am. Usher. When he was just getting his foot in the music industry's door, a 13-year-old Usher spent a year living with Combs. Usher opened up about this experience in a 2016 interview with Howard Stern. Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. Although he made it sound like a blast, Usher hinted at something more disturbing beneath the surface. Usher said that he didn't, quote, understand what he was even looking at. And, quote, very curious things were taking place. I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And I saw it. And it, was, and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. Perhaps most telling, Usher made it clear that he wouldn't want his children attending, quote, puffy camp like their father. Regardless, Usher's protege, Justin Bieber, would spend 48 hours with Combs. It may just I was just going to touch on that, bro. I was just going to touch on that. Usher, you know what I'm saying? And... It's, it's a very sensitive topic when you think about it. Being a, being a kid, spending that amount of time with Diddy, seeing that stuff, not wanting to bring your own kids around, but you bought Justin Bieber. You know what I'm saying? And there are many interviews, there are stories that are on the internet where people are saying, yeah, did he did this to Justin Bieber? Uh, this this happened to Justin Bieber, that happened to Justin Bieber. Oh, he was a kid. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's a that's a tough situation. Because if you seen something or even worse, experienced something that left you traumatized or left you with unforgettable memories, why would you lead anybody else there? Would it be your kids? Whether it would have been Justin Bieber or anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the part that really kind of, like, was a shocker for me. It's like, you don't want to take your kids there, but but you took Justin. You know what I'm saying? When he was a little kid. Like, so, it's, it's, it's a kind of, like, why type of question, you know? that Bieber later gave Combs now reads like a cry for help. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But 
you never really got my number, so. Right, okay. Yeah, 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 Okay. Five, 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 five. Mace. In addition to breaking out as Diddy's hype man in the 90s, Mason Darrell Betha, or Mace, released three studio albums through Bad Boy Records. Mace eventually had a falling out with Combs and his record label. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So the disdain that I got for Puff is more like, you trying to keep me here. Leading up to his former collaborator's arrest, Mace claimed Combs cheated him with a $20,000 publishing deal and had been withholding royalties for decades. In a 2022 interview, Combs asserted that Mace owed him $3 million. That's facts, I got the receipt. Second album, you gave money to do second album, never delivered. Did the album never deliver, you know okay. what I'm saying? And I'm not going to go back and forth with Mace, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going back and forth with nobody. Combs nevertheless returned the publishing rights to Mace and several other bad boy artists the following year. Although Mace was among the first to call Combs out over royalties, he wouldn't be the last. In 2024, former bandmate Don Richards sued Combs, citing, among other things, roughly $5 million in unpaid earnings. Don had the choice to file the case as a Jane Doe. And she chose not to do that. After giving it a fair amount of thought, she wants accountability. She wants justice. Cat Williams. I sure hope I have a uh, club Shay Shay after this year. <laughs> it's going to be in a dimension that's never been. Yeah, it's going to be. I'm writing out on Cat Williams' case. If I'm being honest, if you go back, and I, I can't remember quite what year it was when Cat Williams did this comedy show, but it's an old comedy show. Where Cat Williams is up on stage and he's saying exactly if you're at a Diddy party and you look inside the wrong room, what you could possibly see. You know what I'm saying? Cat Williams said that way back then. It's it's it's, it's plenty of the people that 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 said that way back then. But it's crazy that in 2024, at the beginning of 2024. After all the years of people hinting at this stuff and the world overlooking, that's when everybody's like, oh, Cat Williams was right. Cat Williams has been saying this for the longest. Uh, I know 50 Cent have. You know what I'm saying? This, this man, 50 Cent, coming out with a whole documentary. Did he do it? You know what I'm saying? I know Jaguar Wright been saying this for the longest. I know Gene Deal been hinting at this for the longest. I know other people have been hinting at this for the longest, bro. It's just, I don't know why we live in a society where it's like a innocent until proven guilty, which in some cases, all right. But in most cases, man, like, if all these people are stepping forward and saying, yeah, I've been violated in such this way, and everybody's saying the same thing, at some point, you you got to develop the thought that hey, they must be right about what they saying about this person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can understand if just one person came forward and oh yeah, he did me this way, but multiple people, multiple people, non-famous people, famous people. It's just the simple fact that we live in a society where it's an incident to a proven guilty thing in which it's, it's justifiable to a certain extent. Like I said, I can understand if one person had a came forward and said, oh yeah, I was sexually assaulted by Diddy. Okay, now we have to bag up Go back to the date you said this happened. Now we got to dig up the proof. You know what I'm saying? Because you one person. But everybody been saying this. So, I mean, and this has been going on for years. They've been saying the same thing for years. So, hey. The At some point, you got to think that it's true, bro. If everybody's saying it. In a, in a whole different realm of business. Comedian Cat 
Williams is no stranger to run-ins with the law and reported abusive behavior. As such, it's understandable why some would call Williams' credibility into question. In January 2024, though, Williams made several remarks about Combs that only became more relevant in the months to come. On Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, Williams touched upon the now notorious Diddy parties, advising people to just say no. And you gotta tell him no. And you gotta tell him no. I, I did. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything I'm telling you. That's why I can say I'm so freely. While his reasons were somewhat vague, Williams was especially concerned about protecting a certain area of his body. Williams didn't elaborate further, although he took another shot at Combs later in the interview. I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. <laughs> That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> The oh, recent man. allegations regarding Combs' quote, freakout parties and alleged abuse have painted Williams' words in a whole new light. Aubrey O'Day. What do Donald Trump and Diddy have in common? Well, arguably quite a few things, but singer-slash-reality star Aubrey O'Day is one of them. Once mentored by Combs, O'Day later appeared on the fifth season of The Celebrity Apprentice. I am a very strict and focused businesswoman because working for Diddy for six years trained me to have to be perfect. Working for Diddy? Absolutely. I love Diddy. When O'Day brought up... I bet you you do, Donald. <laughs> Trump wasn't going to shower him with praise. O'Day tiptoed around her former boss, unwilling to say if he was a, quote, good guy, as Trump described him. I don't want to answer that question. Oh, wow. I, I think he's a good guy. I'm going to stick up for him. During the 2019 interview with Variety, O'Day went into greater detail. Discussing her time on the Diddy produced Making the Band, O'Day said, quote, We were scared to death with what would happen with Puff each day. I experienced everything from race remarks to sexism, and a lot of it was scary. So I listened to Gene Deal, his bodyguard. Yeah, I talked to him yesterday. Really? Yeah. Because he had a really astonishing quote. You should hear the one he's not saying. It's even crazier. Right. So he's got stuff in the tuck that he hasn't put out there? Everybody does. Wendy William. Hey, want to know how I got this 50? And what's, what's crazy about it, bro? It's not even the necessary sexual abuse. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't set up here and done, done verbally uh, uh, attacked many females from artists to just people that he came in contact with. And a lot of people have said that. You know what I'm saying? A lot of women have came out and said, like, oh, yeah, when I was working for him, he used to say this and say that. And I'm just like, man, like, that's monstrous in every way, not not just that way. I have broken up with somebody. Who? I don't want to, I don't want to say. Do we know the person? Maybe. Okay. After being fired from Hot 97 in 1998, Wendy Williams accused Combs of playing a role. In 2004, Williams wrote that she would, quote, never forget the hell Combs put her through. Even so, Williams said that she didn't hate Combs. On a 2015 episode of her show, Williams commented on the allegations that Casey Ventura was hiding from Combs. This is a beautiful dress, by the way, that she has on. And Puffy, you look great for all the hard partying. Williams painted Combs as a, quote, mogul you can't escape. The same year, Williams asked Jennifer Lopez if she would ever get back together with Combs. Lopez's mother, Guadalupe Rodriguez, basically answered for her daughter with a look that said everything. Although they reconciled in 2017, viewers have been waiting on pins and needles to hear Williams' thoughts about Combs in the wake of his arrest. You are exhausting me. Let me tell you something. This week has been hella exhausting. 50 Cent. Curtis James Jackson III, a.k.a. 50 Cent, is another big name who's had a long-standing feud with Combs. It all started with 50 Cent's 2006 diss track, The Bomb, which alleged that Combs was connected to the murder of Biggie Smalls. There's still little concrete evidence backing up that conspiracy theory. In October 2023, though, 50 Cent elaborated on his beef with Diddy, describing his parties as, quote, uncomfortable. That, that's not really beef, though. That's just competitive. Uh, yeah. Competitiveness. All right, so you, you and Diddy, you and Puff cool? No, I don't, I don't really oh, got nothing. Oh, okay. Now. During his final <laughs> tour, 50 Cent said Diddy would, quote, hug you from the front and the back at the same time. 50 Cent has been even more vocal about you do that? following the raid on his homes. It's also been reported that 50 Cent sold a docuseries to Netflix entitled <laughs> Diddy Do It. Oh, oh, I guess this means I won't be advised to the white parties in the hands 
too passionate. <laughs> Speaking of conspiracies, 50 Cent has also claimed that Combs got Tupac killed. Again, there isn't much backing this up, although Tupac was also skeptical of Combs. If these rumors or allegations are true, it would make sense he would be able to get away from it or get away with it for so long because people would be afraid. Speaking with Vibe magazine in 1995, Shakur was asked if he thought Combs was connected to his shooting the previous year. Shakur did not hold back, saying, quote, I believe so, adding that, quote, it's between me and him, and only he knows. I have proved things that I can say that will back up my claim, but this is not for the world to know about. About a year later, Shakur I honestly feel him. like with the, with the feds having him in custody now, if they reopen both the cases of Tupac Shakur and Biggie Smalls, they'll find out a whole lot of stuff that the, the folks then probably didn't find out about. Or the the even better, or e, I ain't gonna say even better because there ain't nothing good about this. Even worse, they could find out about the stuff that people knew about and just covered up over these years. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I feel like we're having him in custody. If they reopen those cases and really, really dig into the actual factuals during that time, they might be able to find the actual person who pulled the trigger on both of them. You know what I'm saying? Not since y'all have the foundation of a lot of problems in custody. But I highly doubt they'll do that. They need to, but I highly doubt. Shooting, this one proving fatal. Dwayne Keith D. Davis, who was arrested for Tupac's murder in 2023, once said that Combs offered $1 million to carry out Shakur's assassination. I think that was a bad move, dude, you know what I'm saying? It's to me. Yeah, but show some love, brother love. Whether or not Combs was involved, Shakur's words paint the portrait of a violent man. Rodney Lil Rod we built a seven-figure business as a... They need to reopen that, them cases up, though. Lil Rod Jones. They really need While to. While Combs has faced numerous accusations throughout the years, Rodney Lil Rod Jones was among the first to take serious legal action, contributing to the mogul's current circumstances. Jones was a producer on Combs' The Love album, Off the Grid. According to Jones, though, he, quote, endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer. Claims made by Jones include hidden cameras in the rap mogul's home, saying, quote, Mr. Combs allegedly threatened to eat Mr. Jones's face in order to get what he wants. Jones alleged that Combs repeatedly groped him and made him participate in unwanted sexual activities. This included having to work in the bathroom as Combs showered. What's more, what? Jones claimed that he woke up naked in bed with Combs and two sex workers after being drugged. His lawsuit also implicates Combs' son Justin and Chief of Staff Christina Corum, the latter of whom was accused of grooming. Basically calls her no. Lee Maxwell to Sean Combs' Jeffrey Epstein. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional That's videos crazy. or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. <clears throat> Cassie Ventura, That's crazy. this battle turned singer, was in a relationship with Combs from 2007 to 2018. There had been signs of trouble in paradise. Their relationship was... Um, volatile for sure um and he like you could tell that she was afraid of him in 2015 ventura shared an image of a sleeping baby posting quote how i sleep knowing that i'm single and nobody cheated on me the next year it was reported that the two were seen arguing in beverly hills they went into the bedroom and shut the door and all i could hear is screaming and yelling and whatever was going on in there, I don't know. Five years after their final breakup, Ventura filed a lawsuit against Combs, accusing him of domestic violence, sexual abuse, and sex trafficking. Although Combs denied these claims, the lawsuit would be settled out of court. He, he still paid her. As footage from 2016 surfaced. He still paid her, and the footage still came out. Cassie's claims identically Really, Jake, the lawsuit lines up with exactly what we are seeing. Combs issued an apology, while many have supported Ventura for marking the beginning of his downfall. I will say this. I, f I feel like when that video came out, that, that started the, the true beginning of, like, quote-unquote, 
what we call a downfall. I feel like when that video came out, that's the one thing that somebody accused him of doing and they were actually right about it. Even after everyone said, hey, bro, nah, she, she capped. She capped out. She ain't telling the truth. Even Diddy said he didn't do it. They, they paid out the 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 30-some million dollars that she was trying to sue him for. It came out that he even paid to get that footage. It still hit the internet. And that opened up the gateway for everybody else to come in and uh, file their lawsuits, file their pain and suffering, file all this other stuff. That Cassie footage set the tone for all the things that we're hearing about right now. If what you ask other me. celebrity accounts have you looking at Diddy differently? Let us know in the comments. I have my own opinion, but I wish to slander their name like they did mine. One thing about it, bro, like, and which I done said this in previous you videos. I done said this in previous videos, man. We are honestly going to be hearing about Things referring to Diddy and people that were involved with him, whether they're on the victim side or the monster side, as I'll call it, for a little minute. Um, they far from done with this case because if you ask me, all the things that people have been saying over the years, all the lawsuits and all that stuff, they have a lot of digging and they got to go all the way back. They they have to dig back years down the line, if you ask me. You know, and if they dig deep enough, they can find what they need to find or whoever they need to find. It's just all about if they're dedicated to digging up all of that proof and stuff and things that people have said on situations regarding him way back then you know what i'm saying but listen y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments man because this is a very sensitive topic i can go on and on and on about it but i'm not gonna do too much talking so y'all let me know what y'all think this is the end of the video make sure y'all like make sure y'all comment most importantly make sure y'all subscribe and hit that post notification bell set it to all all social media links will be in the description the link to the previous reaction video will be there as well Follow me on all my social medias. Click the link to the previous reaction video and watch that whole video after you watch this whole video, man. I say this every video so we won't forget. I'm still putting the Sean Armour stuff in the description. Still putting all that stuff there. The website is still down, unfortunately. But I'm going to let y'all know when they do have that website back up and running so you can get right back into utilizing it, man. But that's besides the point. I love y'all and I appreciate y'all for showing me love back. And we out this thing, man, for real.